Hello guys and welcome to another bonus content. So now that we've finished the uh, hardcore series, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, this uh, time around I'm actually going to be doing a step-by-step -step process of developing a mod from scratch up. I uh, will be making a, di a dimension, I'm going to be showing you some key features on, um, you know, like uh, designing entities to uh, creating 3D models for blocks and all that other stuff for M Creator. Um, this is definitely a series that will show the whole process of how um, to basically develop a mod from scratch and problem solve things to hopefully, you know, general issues and stuff like that that will help you figure out things in actually developing the mod and stuff like that. So, um, we're going to be developing a dimension, but we're going to be adding a lot of key elements, things like structures, mobs, things like that. So um, it's going to be a pretty long series, and since there's only going to be like, I don't know, like a couple, um, maybe about a video a week or whatever on Fridays. So it's going to take a little bit long to get this all done, but uh, it will be a pretty interesting thing I think in the long spectrum of things so you guys can actually see the process of developing a mod. So without further ado, um, we actually need some textures. So now that we have uh, a workspace, I'm calling it uh, Wilderness Winds, that's the mod that I'm going to be working on. Uh, we actually need some textures. So I figure what we're going to do is start with some trees. We'll get a basic biome uh, set up so we can uh, integrate that biome into a dimension and then we can start working on key features of that biome. So we're probably actually going to be adding a quite a few different a few different um, leaves and stuff as well. So let's hop over to paint.net. I have that already pinned to my desktop so I can basically quickly make some uh, images up. I'm actually going to grab um, a extra Icon. Now, if you haven't uh, seen how to grab the um, files from the uh, Minecraft jar, then um, I have done a video on it, but that's uh, for another day. I'll link it down in the description sh to show you guys how to basically grab the files for yourself. But um, I have them stored, I believe it's under my mods, resources, and then we're going to be working with 1.14, assets, Minecraft, textures, and then we want blocks. And I'm going to scroll down until I find uh, probably a leaf that I like. So I can also type in oak and oak leaves. I'll copy that, or we can just open it and we'll copy it or we can edit it actually, and then that will open it up in our default program. Mine is uh, paint.net, so we'll be able to basically quickly configure this a little bit. Now, uh, for textures wise, I have a little other icon right here. This is for colors and stuff like that. Uh, this is my default palette that I've created, so I can customize it as I wish or um, work with different hues and stuff. Now, basically what hues are, are the color spectrum of things. S stands for shading, so this is obviously uh, black. This is, uh, I believe, full color, so uh, black and white, full color. And anywhere between is um, basically a, kind of on the gray spectrum. Uh, v is, I believe, the white contrast, but it has shows how much color you want. So, as you can see, this is goes from white to color. This goes to black to color. So, shading and something else, but hue is the thing. You can also play around with RBGs, but that's like really hard to work with sometimes. It's easier to work with the HSV uh, settings and. Alpha is your transparency. Now, when you're working with textures, um, transparency for uh, blocks and stuff has to be above or equal to 128. So if you're working with any transparent textures, anything below 128 won't um, render as a transparent color. So it has to be uh, 128, which is a decent color uh, 
or transparency, I guess. Now, the next thing that you might need to notice is a lot of these programs will actually have like a padded um, uh, square triangle or square boxes behind uh, to indicate transparent textures and the solid textures in front, these ones here, uh, all along here and stuff are uh, solid pixels. So when you're working with transparent textures, you have to save it as a PNG regardless um, because Minecraft uses PNG files to um, basically say, okay, this is, uh, uh, uses transparent textures. There's not a lot of other file formats that um, are common that use transparency outside of PNG, so um, just make sure that your files are PNG. So for this, uh, I think I want something around green, so I'm just going to kind of go around here, maybe a yellowy green. We're going to adjust the uh, the transparency so it's uh, full again to 255 and then I'm going to just play around with the lightness and uh, I want it so it's a little bit more on the gray side to start with and we'll just fill this in like that actually there's an easier way of doing that if we go to our little um, tool um, selection tab here we can actually click on the, the magic wand we can set the tolerance to zero and then we can select all the textures of the same color and then we can go to the paint bucket and hit control and shift and then we can paste or paint all of them at the same time. And uh, to do that again, uh, we want to select the next color and uh, control shift and then it's uh, then you right click or left click on it and then it will select all the same color one. Now this one I'm going to have a little bit more color and it's going to be a little bit more darker so I want it somewhere around here. I'm going to paint that all in like that so it's starting to come along decently. And I think the next one, okay so to, to deselect, so you've, uh, you press uh, control Z and that will deselect everything. So that's another thing that you might want to keep in mind. So I'm going to bring it a little bit more color, maybe a little bit more different color shade or the hue. So it's just a little bit different. And I'm going to want a little bit more dark, a little bit more color. And I'm going to select the final amount and then we're going to paste this in. So that's basically what we have for our leaves. That's um, pretty decent. Um, we can work with that now that we have that. So if we're not happy exactly with the the brightness or anything like that, what we can do is go to adjustments and we can go to, and then what we can do is we can adjust the hue itself. So say we want something a little bit more blue or a little bit more green, we can play around with the, uh, the coloring as well. So I'm going to, um, and saturation is basically the, uh, the gray, to um, full color, so you can play around with that if it's not exactly bright enough for you. And lightness to darkness, uh, this basically uh, goes from a white spectrum to a black spectrum. It's a little bit different than contrast and brightness. Lightness is a little bit different because it has kind of like that masky white color onto it. So if you were to work with uh, brightness and contrast, you might notice a few different uh, things uh, brightness and contrast doesn't um, well brightness doesn't really have like too much of a different like it doesn't mask it with white so much it has like a different uh, setting on how it compiles the um, increases the gamma and stuff of it where contrast basically um, makes colors and stuff a little more stand out from the other ones so you want to kind of play with a mixture of all of these settings. Um, now there's another way you can do it. It's uh, levels. This is a little bit more advanced, but um, it's pretty easy to use and paint on it. What you can do is you can actually adjust the, the bars here until you get something that you like. And it actually keeps the original color a little bit nicer than just messing around with the contrast and brightness or the hue settings. And I mean, we just made this whole... Thing look a lot better so I'm gonna actually set that to um, 
okay, and you just play around with the bars and eventually you'll get something you like. That's all it is when you're coming to textures, you just get something you like and then you're like, okay, that looks good enough. And then if it doesn't look good enough in game, then you try again with adjusting the actual texture. So anyways, uh, once you get something you like, uh, I'm going to actually use this uh, texture for the um, the leaves that we're going to be using. So I'm going to use that. Uh, you want to save it as. Make sure you only have one layer. If you have multiple layers like this, make sure you compile those layers down. Um, or it will save it as a, um, a paint.net file. So it's a uh, PDN, I believe, uh, where you want PNG. So if you go to File, Save As, and then you um, save it to somewhere that you can remember. I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now and name it something for your mod. So I'm going to call it um, uh, Maple Maple Leaves, and then we're going to just save it there. You're also going to want a branch texture or, you know, the stem for your logs. So you might want to mess around with that and uh, get ready for the next episode when we actually bring it into the actual um, program. But uh, next episode, I think what we're going to do is work on individual textures and kind of build a log texture from scratch. So it's good for changing textures like this for a base um, thing from the base game, but uh, developing your own is always uh, makes the game look a little bit more unique. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that in uh, paint.net next episode. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.